Turner here with Pro Tools Expert, and we are at NAB 2017 on the final day at the Avid booth with Jeff Comer, uh, who is going to tell us about Dolby Atmos features inside of Pro Tools. Dolby Atmos is a 7.1.2 format. The point two refers to two overhead speakers to give you a third dimension of sound. Uh, and the new tagline is the sound of virtual reality. It makes surround sound that much more realistic and immersive. Uh, we have got a panner we're gonna look in first. So Jeff, tell us all about it. Sure, absolutely. So first of all, a little bit of backstory. Uh, Abbott and Dolby have been working together to really improve the efficiency of working in this immersive audio format, which is Dolby Atmos in Pro Tools. Um, obviously, sound designers and mixers have been doing shows uh, in Atmos for several years, uh, but there's some challenges, uh, quite frankly, to, to, to pull that off. And so we really wanted to make it a lot more efficient and easy to work in this incredible format. So um, there's a, a number of key improvements that we've added to Pro Tools. And, the, and that, the beginning of that starts with, as you mentioned, 712 tracks, 712 buses, uh, which is the, the, uh, the format that Atmos uses, right? So as, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the beds, right? Your dialogue music effects beds with Atmos would be 712. Uh, and then on top of that, the dynamic objects, being able to address up to 118 objects, uh, which are rendered by the Dolby Render Engine. So if you take a look at either Pro Tools or the S6, you're going to see uh, probably a somewhat familiar panner interface. Uh, but now you can actually uh, either pan a, a bus or you can pan objects directly from the same interface. So it's super powerful. So all the parameters that are part of the Dolby Atmos Panner plugin, like elevation and size and the elevation modes and zone masks uh, and speaker snap, it's all embedded into the same interface. So it's very, very efficient, whether you're doing object-based work or you're just doing uh, you know, channel-based, bus-based panning. You can see he's playing with uh, zone masks uh, and uh, that's uh, popping into some of the different elevation modes where basically it'll automate the process of managing the Z. He's moving X and Y, and it's moving Z based on a certain room shape. Like, do you have a, a domed cathedral? That would be sphere mode. Uh, you know, do you have a, a wedge-shaped uh, you know, ceiling, and that's wedge mode? Uh, or there's you know, freeform, where you can tr completely control the Z. And we have, obviously, access to um, you know, to integration directly on the S6 to do this as well. If we uh, just take a quick look over here, you're looking at the 2D panner view right now, which we can play with uh, the size, and size is really spreading that element into peripheral speakers. Uh, if we uh, go and grab uh, the elevation, you're going to see the dot uh, shrink or grow. Uh, appropriately to, uh, to let's actually go into freeform mode and we'll go grab elevation. You can see you're getting closer to the overheads or you're getting further away. We actually do also have a 3D view, which is super powerful. And uh, we can actually move the room around. We can play with X, Y, and then uh, also play with the Z axis, right? That might be a little bit easier to uh, control. Uh, you, well, you, to be honest, you can do it in multiple ways. I can do controls right from the MTM uh, touchscreen interface. If you, if you take a quick look down here, this is uh, one of our new fader expand, uh, expand faders on the S6 where I've got elevation, I've got size, I've got um, uh, my uh, front and rear and all of my different modes, we talked about zone masks and stuff, accessible uh, directly from the expand fader zone, and then also the master joystick module, right? Being able to control um, all of this stuff directly from there, super powerful. Uh, you can see I've got X, Y over here, and then I can actually just do a quick button press, and now I've got Z um, on, the right, uh, on the right joystick. I can play with size, right? So X, Y, and Z all you know, manipulated from that interface. So a lot of really cool stuff integrating the, um, into the panner, both in Pro Tools application as well as at S S6. Another huge feature is the idea that on your track elements, they are simultaneously feeding, can be feeding a bus or an object. And so that allows you to do really powerful things like automated routing. So on the fly, I could turn 
a dialogue track, which is just feeding into the dialogue bus into an, into an object on the fly and then move it up into the overheads, maybe for a, a futz or a comm, and then bring it back into the bed. So you have automated routing between objects and buses on all your tracks. You have direct communication with the Dolby RMU. You have significant improvements to stem recording, re-recording workflows uh, in Pro Tools for, for Atmos, um, as well as uh, a very, very efficient way, and I'll show you this real quick here, to translate uh, legacy sessions. So if I actually go and select some objects in my legacy session, what I mean by that is the previous way to do this was obviously having 118 Dolby Atmos um, Panner plugins, right, in your template. Well, now, since it's all embedded, people are like, well, how do I get to everything to be native? With one click, you can duplicate Atmos plugin automation to pan automation, and it takes all of that metadata uh, for, for, for the objects, well, and it turns it into native automation in Pro Tools. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. So, so that's, that's a basic overview of, uh, of what we've got. Uh, I know you wanted to, to take a, just a brief look also at the uh, Nugent product, which uh, we're big fans of as well. And this is the Halo Up Mix, uh, which they are working on releasing a 712 version of. Super so the cool. The idea is that something that was originally recorded with fewer channels yeah. can be upmixed and have authentic spatialization in that's, the 7.1. Yeah, that's exactly camera. right. You can upmix a 7.1, you can upmix a 2 channel. Uh, we've actually got some music tracks that are being upmixed to 7.1.2. But obviously, adding the, the concept of the overheads, uh, left top, right top, uh, gives you a lot of cool creative possibilities. Very cool. Well, Jeff, thank you so, so much. No problem. Uh, and this is Dolby Atmos, the surround sound protocol of the future inside of Pro Tools here at NAB 2017.